When you look at trade wars, first of all, if there's a trade war, is it inflationary or deflationary for the world? It's inflationary. Um, cer certainly what we've seen from Trump should be inflationary in the sense that we're, we're going to see increasing tariffs on steel. Um, and There's no doubt that's going to have an inflationary impact because certainly the steel users, or you know, so your car, car, car manufacturers, autos, etc., they're all going to have to pay more for their steel. So I think on that basis, it, it definitely looks to be inflationary. Um, and it also coming at a time when, you know, sort of the, the, the overall sort of um, underlying output gap in the States is, is, is pretty much gone or non-existent. So uh, at this stage in the cycle, I think it, it can only be inflationary at this point. Okay, does it mean that actually we've peaked for world growth? It's, it seems as though we have. Um, certainly the, the kind of the global, globally synchronous growth that we had in most of last year seems to have desynchronized in the first quarter. And we're not now starting to see the IMF, certainly if you look at their uh, estimates, they're looking at kind of 3.9% growth this year, maybe 37 in 2020 and, and thereafter. So it seems as though we've we peaked <clears> at this stage. One of my themes today, Peter, is dollar ambiguity. We really do, don't know which theory or which theme to take with the dollar. What is the Commerce Bank theory or theme strategy, if you will, with the U.S. dollar? US dollar. Um, from our perspective, we're rather um, uh, we're not as constructive on the dollar as many other sort of market participants, and, and that's, that just reflects the fact that we think that more or less most of the Fed's rate hiking cycle is priced in. And additionally, we think that the um, whilst you're seeing headline CPI in the states being rel relatively elevated, the core underlying CPI, CPI measure is still sort of you know just below target in the states. So on that basis, um, you know, and given the fact we're going to get a you know a twin deficit scenario in the states over the next year or two, um, I'm think I'm basically of the view that I think we'll, we'll start to see the dollar continue to depreciate once again uh, over the coming months and years. What euro level does Europe want? I think uh, the ECB and, and indeed broader Europe, they're, they're not really all that concerned about the euro once sort of growth and inflation does what the ECB think it's going to do, right? So um, if we see inflation coming towards trends you know, of 1.5% or, or thereabouts on the headline measure, if we see core CPI in the eurozone you know, grind higher towards 1.2%, 1.3%, and GDP growth coming in around 2%-ish. Um, the ECB won't really be all that um, concerned. It's only really if we see uh, you know, inflation start to decrease in the Eurozone uh, as a result of a higher Euro that the ECB will concern. But normally speaking, if, if, if inflation and growth does what the, what the ECB think it's going to do, the ECB won't really be all that uh, bothered by what the Euro does.